This is the Laramie Depot Museum, located in Laramie, Wyoming. The depot was built in 1927 to replace the old depot that was destroyed in a fire a few years prior. The station was last used in Amtrak in 1985 and has been a museum ever since. The brochure of this depot includes a map of the old buildings here. Laramie was a very important point along the Sherman Hill route between Cheyenne and Green River, Wyoming. But since diesels took over, trains no longer stop here really, but there is a welded rail facility still here. The depot has an entire display train which was here since 2011. Includes a snowplow, a locomotive, a bunk car, and a caboose. The caboose here is number 25232 and used to be on display at the Laramie Information Center. This bunk car has no road name or number, so I don't know anything about this bunk car. Next, we see the tender of the locomotive, number 535 of the Oregon Short Wine. A few mid-sized locomotives like this one were lettered for the Oregon short line. Number 535 is a 280 consolidation of the C57 class, built in 1903 by the Baldwin Locomotive Works. I believe the locomotive tender and snowplow were being prepared for repainting. And this one white panel on the snowplow makes it look like it's not a rebuilt from a Vanderbilt tender. Five thirty five used to be on display in Labonte Park, located one mile north from the depot. About a year after I photographed these, the locomotive and snowplow were repainted. The snowplow has a nice striping design on the plow itself. Over at the welded rail facility, you can see a old baggage car body on the ground. A close-up of the rail welding facility will be shown later in this video. I believe when I was here there were like two or three sets of welded rail flat cars. I can see it. This tall smokestack is from the power plant that used to be here. It powered only the Union Pacific buildings. One of the light bulbs of the two bulb headlight has come out of place. Apparently, Snowplow 900,015 used to work on the Wyoming-Colorado Railroad. As the large gaping holes show, it was probably filled with rocks to weigh it down. There's less white material on this side of the 535, but the cylinder panel is still left unpainted and is paint lettered right west. I believe this locomotive was probably disassembled at one point, partially. This side of the cab is actually bare metal. This side of the bunk car says that it was owned by the Wyoming Colorado Railroad Company as well. Out of all the equipment here, this car is in the best shape. On this side of the caboose, it looks like the number is almost completely gone. It also tells us that it was used for local service on Marysville, Kansas, and it was the Class CA5 Center Vision caboose. The windows here are actually whited out from the inside. At the front of this station, you can see there's this two-way semaphore signal. Usually, I've seen those mounted on the side of the station. I have no idea what they are used for. Across the street, there's this building that collapsed. Apparently, the building collapsed in 2015 after catching fire in 2014. On the front door of the depot, you can see that it still has the Amtrak sticker on it. I have no idea if Amtrak made any modifications to the inside of the station. It looks pretty much the same as it would in 1920s. 
actually got to go inside it on one of the very rare times it was open throughout the year. Along the walls are many historic pictures of the Union Pacific Railroad and the town of Laramie itself. This panoramic photo shows the original depot. This picture was taken shortly after the new depot was completed. This picture is of Union Pacific 3619, a Bull Moose Class 2880, built by Alco between 1918 and 1924. It was a very slow engine and was soon replaced by the 9000 Class 412 2s. And this is what the 9000 Class looked like. It was first built in 1926. This board is pictures all about the Union Pacific 3985 Challenger. One of the pictures is the Challenger Dome Car. Check it out. They even have a huge model of 3985 on display in the Depot Museum. On the shelf below the model, there is a Lionel Diesel, an observation car, and a Union Pacific towel. They even have a number plate of Union Pacific Big Boy number 4004, which survives in Cheyenne, Wyoming. That's a uh, missed it. That's okay. I'll they also have a number plate of Union Pacific 801, an FEF-1, built in 1936. It's basically the same as 844. That train going by outside was the same one that was shown the beginning of the video. There's also these neat looking rail samples here. Yep, same train. I believe this scale was used for weighing baggage at the station. They even have the sign from the Amtrak days here. Amtrak last served Laramie in 1997 when it discontinued the Pioneer from Denver to Seattle. I don't know which city this porcelain cow is from. Is it from Cheyenne or Laramie? There are these display boards here. I won't go into too much detail here, but I will show you the blueprints. This blueprint is from the revolutionary M10,000's power car. They also included this nice painting of M10,000. I have no idea who painted it though. Here's a blueprint of the classic 440's in its later days. Here's a blueprint of a 1904-462 Pacific locomotive. I have no idea if any of these survived. This board probably dates back from the 1970s or 1980s before there were wide cab locomotives. This engine is a DD-35A, built in 1963. None of the DD-35 survived. There's also this shelf of railroad books and some DVDs. I have no idea if they belong to the Laramie Public Library. They seem to have those labels for libraries. This shelf displays the evolution of handheld railroad lamps very well. There's even a caboose marker lamp. In one of the shelves, there are some pre-war Lionel O-Gage trains. The only pre-war Lionel O-Gage train with the Union Pacific name on it was the M10,000. There are some HO scale cars and a Cato N scale Southern Pacific Daylight Passenger Car set still in its box. There is even an N gauge model of the Laramie Depot Park itself. I guess the Rocky Mountain Region NMRA was held in Laramie in the early 1980s. There's quite a lot of neat signage on this wall. This was when 844 went to the New Orleans World's Fair in 1984.
On the counter here are some old timetables. The Pennsylvania Railroad one was pretty odd because it doesn't really connect to Union Pacific outside of Chicago. Though you can't really see it, this is a picture of a big boy pulling a string of reefers under the pedestrian bridge here in Laramie. And here's a picture from the bridge itself. The person working the museum when I visited said that it was pretty common for people to jump down from the bridge to check the ice hatches on the reefer cars. And here's a view from the bridge facing the other way towards the engine facilities. And this is of the conveyor belts that took ice to the reefer cars before modern air conditioning. I guess this picture was taken on opening day of the Laramie Depot. And here's how the current depot looked like back in the day. In one of the windows is a sign from the Amtrak days. This sign shows that some sleeper cars were through via the Empire Builder. In the background you can see there is a couple of horse carts put on the ceiling. Someone even donated a personalized Union Pacific license plate. This museum even got an award from the Albany County Historical Society. And this picture shows another of the 2880s mentioned earlier. And this shows 4122 number 9000 five point reefers outside of Laramie. And I believe this is a picture of one of those 462 Pacifics that I showed the blueprints of earlier. Those orange and green things, I think there are actually old tickets. I believe this was made in 1969, judging by the picture of Centennial number 6900. And this plate here shows where all those pictures on the wall came from. Now we are on the bridge overlooking the rail yards, and we can see some old open top hopper cars, one of them for from the Chicago Northwestern Railroad. The locomotive seen in this yard is E Pacific 1835, an SD40-2R. On the track next to it, you can see a Missouri Pacific hopper car. Number 1835 was most likely built in the early 1970s for the Union Pacific Railroad and rebuilt in the mid to late 1990s. I think this is the first time I've seen one of those dumping cars in person. Here are two old baggage car bodies on the ground. One is in Union Pacific's maintenance of way light blue while the other is in white. Although these hopper cars are empty, I assume they are used to carry ballast to go under the tracks. One of the hopper cars has this tracking bar thing from the 1980s. I believe this part was where the welded rail was finished. Union Pacific last produced welded rail here in about September 2013. But there are still lots of freight cars for the welded rail in this yard. And I have no idea how this plant produces welded rail, so I don't know what each component is for. Part of the overhead cranes track is standard railroad rail. This set of welded rail carrying flat cars has welded rails loaded onto it. In the other side of the yard, there's another old baggage car body and a snowmobile thingy.
These gondola cars have short sections of track with ties on them, probably for near switches. Although you can't really see it, that white car is a skill test car, and I don't know what that green thing is. With the shutdown of this rail welding facility, it'll be more likely that Laramie will have less and less railroad yard activity in the future. Our final shot here in Laramie, Wyoming is a lonely freight car axle sitting on the tracks. The next episode of Mr. BNSF Train's Railcation of 2016 will be in Cheyenne, Wyoming, featuring Big Boy number 4004.